Hey boy, everyone. So, um, you might remember that when, we, when the engine was in the car and we were driving around, we had this slight problem where we had to um, keep on stopping and putting enough fuel in to keep the dirt away from the pickup pipe inside the tank. So, basically, the issue there is um, old cars have a lovely metal fuel tanks, and when you leave them for long enough, um, they just basically rust inside, and all the rust obviously just turns into loads of little bits of grit that then blocks the feed pipe up. So what we're doing while it's all out is taking the, in, taking the tank out, assessing it with any luck we can stick an old chain inside, chuck it around a little bit and get all the loose stuff out of the way, empty it and rinse it through, and then we can um, basically give it a coating, what I believe is called a bit of bitumen, which basically just seals the inside of the tank off and it's completely um, fuel, um, fuel tyrant and it doesn't get broken down by fuel or anything like that, so it just seals it basically inside. Now, there's two ways you can do this job, depending on what tank you've got. So, according to the book on these cars, uh, there's two size fuel tanks, a big one and a small one. If it's a small one, then this nut I'm about to undo will take the tank out the back of the car. If, on the other hand, it's the other tank, which is bigger, then we'll be undoing um, some extra bolts somewhere that allow you to raise the body of the car off the rear axle assembly because you need the extra space to clear between the body and the rear axle to get the tank out. I've no idea which one this is. So we're going to undo this nut and see if we're lucky. Good Christ, I hope I am. <laughs> Let's see how it goes, shall we? Right, I'll move that stupid thing out of the way. Voila, the bolt, the nut rather, is now off. And I cannot tell at all if it's going to let me take it out. So um, I'll just show you the uh, brackets at the back end of the tank that basically secure the, um, that end of it behind the bulkhead panel. And with any luck, we'll get it out. Otherwise, uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. It kind of spit. I probably should have showed this end before I showed you underneath, but never mind. I always do things back because you all know this. So, yeah, that's the strap that side, and that's on that side. You've got a nut at the bottom on either side that attaches it directly to the fuel tank, and then one at the top as well. I'm going to take both of those out, top and bottom. Actually, the bottom one's already off, to be fair. And then, fingers crossed, it comes out. Otherwise, it's going to get very interesting. And actually, that bit on there is what I couldn't see the other day because I didn't have a torch on me. That is the sender unit. Yay, we found it. And something that just occurred to me is, um, this bolt down here that you can see, on that edge, that is actually the drain plug. Now if I dare try and undo that, um, which would be ideal, um, there is still about 20 litres in it, because that's how much it had to be at, so it didn't pick up all the junk, so, yeah. Okay. All right, just showing you the difference between the small tank and the big tank. The reason why I'm pretty certain that mine is the big tank. And the difference is, um, it says there you've got to actually raise the back end of the car from the rear axle to give you just enough clearance. So, yeah, I'll show you why. It's all to do with that little shape there at the bottom half of the tank that, from what I can fathom, um, makes you know which one's which. So you notice the, dip, the shape difference between the small and the big one being apparently the bulge on this side. Which have a look, mine appears to have. How joyful. So what I can fathom out is that basically I've got to try, there should be two bolts either side on that cross member that I'm flashing the torch out by the brake pipe. If you want two bolts both sides, and you basically raise the body of the car, which enables you to clear half this at the moment it's literally you can pivot it side to side about 45 degrees on the rear nut that it won't actually come off because of, there's not enough room for it to be able to basically wobble off it so yeah basically you've got to raise the body of the car up away from the gearbox and axle so you can then clear between there and there oh they love making it fun don't they <laughs> oh see mine has also got 20 litres diesel which is 20 kilos worth great Okay, so as we can see, um, you've got a shock absorber spring assembly there, a strap that actually acts as an anti roll bar and stops the vehicle um, rolling, the body of the car rolling away from the axle. 
basically, as it's always going down the road, the wheel's doing its thing, hitting all the bumps. The shock absorber is taking the shock, the spring is basically taking the weight, and the shock absorber is taking away the shock effect of the spring bouncing around. Um, the rubber bumps that you can see there, when it rolls so far, the bumps hit the torque tubes, which have a basically like a um, half shaft going through them. You've only got a strap that's there also to stop it rolling. It goes the opposite way because obviously if one side, if this side of the car is going up while the other side's going down, hitting the bump stop, there's nothing there to stop it. So the strap is there to stop it rolling any further. And basically, as you can see there, there is see if we can zoom in. There's a nut there either side of the bump stop that actually attaches the entire rear axle to the crossman to the chassis legs of the car. And Along with that, you've then got uh, those holes there coming away from the end of the half, uh, um, coming from the end of the torque tubes, that then go up to the centre of the car roughly where the hand is, and they basically stabilise the side, sideways movement. Well, that's how, that's how it's all attached to the car. And then on, at that end, you basically have uh, two baby clamps that um, basically attach you to the middle of the car, a couple of uh, bushes there as well. I'm told not to touch any part of that because um, well, they don't deteriorate or not, they're not. And generally speaking, the, this, this assembly typically probably outweigh, outweighs the owner's life. So don't touch it as well. I'll do as I'm told for once. But um, yeah, basically, to get the tank out, I've got to undo the two nuts either side of the bump stops on the rear axle. And that then allows us to raise the back of the car off of the axle give us the clearance between the top of the bell housing and the top of the bulkhead. You might be thinking how's that going to change the distance you've got between the bulkhead and the gearbox. The well, gearbox is actually basically fixed by these bushes and a couple of other things to the rear axle. So yeah, undo those bolts and hopefully fingers crossed we can then figure out a way to lift the body up. So now I think about it, it could be all really the fun. I'm just wondering where the hell I can lift it from, but we'll come to that in a minute. But yeah, that's why we've got to lift it up, and that's how we've roughly got to do it. Will it go that smoothly or not? Well, we know how things go, they never go smoothly, do they? Oh well, let's have fun. Okay, another lovely problem to um, entertain ourselves with. So I've got to take off the bump stop, which is held on by that 13mm at the very front, because unless you take that off, the metal cup around the bump stop completely and utterly stops you getting any socket or even span it on the nut beside it in front of me, in fact on the camera, that um, you need to be able to undo to do what we've got to do. Yeah, they love making things hard, don't they? Oh well. Well I've got one, this one's loose, just got onto the other side and then we can hopefully get the back two bolts undone and then tr start having a figure out how the hell we're going to lift the body above the axle. Right, let's crack on with this and um, then we've got to try and figure out how the hell I'm going to lift the body away from this chassis. Yeah, not going to lie. The manual says that you get a big, big bar, you put it across the two back here, two back rear panels, and you then lift it. Um, yeah, I don't know what part of that is um, very uh, home DIY yourself about it. So I might have to come up with something rather um, ingenious, I'm wondering. Maybe, possibly... I wonder if maybe something ingenious. Maybe if I was to maybe put a, a bit of wood maybe between that rear bum bumper bracket and the one on this side, maybe it would then allow us to put a jack underneath it and lift it that way. Because obviously the bumper mounts on this are actually attached to the rear chassis legs. So, I wonder if actually now there, I wonder if that might be the best way to do it. Yeah, I think that's actually a good way to do it. I've actually come up with a good idea. That rarely happens. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. We'll see how that goes when I put it into action. But um, for now, let's just get these bolts out, shall we? We are now in scary times. The bolts are there, but there's no nuts on the bottom. This car is now being held down by its own pure weight. Scary. Very scary. And if I can, if I put enough lift on any part of the back of this car now, uh, say like this, if I can find something, you might even be able to hear it creak. 
No, nope, that's the bumper mounts loose. There you go. You can hear it now. But hang on. If I do that a bit more, actually, you can actually see the back of the car. You might be able to just about to see that I definitely can. But that is actually me taking a little bit of the weight of the back of the car. Put a bit of movement. That is scary. <laughs> okay, now it's got to figure out a way to lift it. The weight doesn't kind of kill me. Right, I've just had a really clever idea. I'm not sure if it's going to work, but we'll soon find out. So basically, I was going to try and get something on top of the jack as the gearbox is now um, to basically sit. I've run these the bumper overriders here, all the chassis legs, and I had a better idea, which I've just had just as I was about to lower the rear of the car on the stands, which have been sitting underneath the torque tubes over there if I ever saw the gearbox. What I'm going to do is put the actual stands below the chassis legs both sides, lower the whole car down and if the body happens to hit the top of there first it will lift it above the axle as we need it to and do a job easily for us if not we'll come to that in a minute either way if it hits there first brilliant it's just made life easier if it doesn't it's close to the floor and we can get jack underneath it easier anyway so let's see what happens but um, fingers crossed it'll work okay so as it turns out that is how high the rear end of this car sits off the floor when it's sitting on its wheels. That is terrifying. But um, on the other hand, I've just had an, another idea, as we now know that. I've got a block of wood, which I normally use to prop up engines, just keep them still on the floor. If I can find another one the same size, put them between here and the basically the engine mounts, I reckon that'll work, you know. Soon find out. Well... Here we have it, sitting on these blocks here. It probably looks ridiculously unstable in a video, but hey ho. If we look over here, just about to see the gap there between the chassis there and that. And that side is just waiting to go a bit more because I think they're slightly different thicknesses wood wise. But as you can see from that little gap over here, if I zoom it in a little bit for you, it has separated. That is brilliant. <laughs> So uh, carry on doing that and then we can um, pull the tank out. Lovely! Right, we're part way through pulling it out. As you can see, it's now sitting on top of the bell housing. And it's obviously now touching the bulkhead as well. So we're getting there now. Brilliant. Here we go, chats, we've done it. One fuel tank out the back of a Renault 10. Let's see if we can lift it out. It's really on video. I can't do much where you can see it, sadly, because I'm doing it one hand, one, one person as usual. There we have it. One tank out of a Renault 10. Right, chaps, as you can see, there's now no tank in here. Bit of them might be a bit clean to do, but as from what I can see, there is no rust away up here, which is absolutely bloody brilliant, those, if you ask me. No, no work to do at all. Let's give it a good clean up. Possibly uh, re understood it in here and all the rest of it. But as you can see, that is the work you have to do to get the tank out on a Renault 10 with a larger tank, anyway. So, I'm really impressed with that. That's a really good morning's work. Take about two hours, I think, all in. So, yeah, really, really happy with that. So, now what we can do is, um, you might have heard all of the uh, fuel sloshing around in here. Probably can now. I've got to get that out, probably by just tipping up for the filler there. And then, uh, yeah. We can then uh, find out how dirty it is in soil. We know there's loads of crap in it because it comes up every time you let the fuel level get low when you're driving. So, see how bad it is. And we have got one or two leads already that are saying um, there's a tank that's uh, ready for me to have it if I need it. So, that's brilliant news as well. Okay, guys, so just to give you an idea, I've just drained the tank out into every single empty bottle I've got going around that's virtually clean because obviously petrol price is not cheap these days and to do with cleaning costs so um, I'm basically going to be keeping hold of the petrol I can basically use it as a clean engine to soak parts in it to give them an initial clean if you like but also this moment time gives us a good opportunity to have a look at the colour of the stuff and at the moment um, yeah if I show you what's just come out the very last sort of uh, few litres it looks more like some very dodgy version of red diesel but I can assure you it's definitely petrol but yeah all this put together it's quite a surprise really the engine was running as nice as it was because um, it had dodgy compression 
and as you can see, very dirty petrol. Ow, oh, hang on a minute. I've worked, I could have just worked out what some of the red is actually. That wouldn't be the colour of rust, that would be the colour of red X that was put in it. <laughs> I've just thought that, that's what the red is. But yeah, there's um, some of the dirt on top of here, you can see little bits of um, grit, that's what has come out of the petrol though. So, yeah, it's not great, but um, hopefully we're going to get a good look, we're going to um, rinse it around a little bit and see what we can get out of it. So, I know there's some dirt in it because the amount that was coming through, so let's have a look, shall we? Okay, if I hold this quite close like this, and then move it around, I'll be able to hear the dirt. You got the water splashing, a lovely noise of all the rub all the rubble moving around. Alright, just to go with the rest of the DIY idea fix. This is a way that a lot of people do this job DIY style. You basically want to get all the surface rust that you normally get off with a wire brush off on the inside this tank, but you can't quite get access to it. Chuck some stones in it, a little shingle, and shake it like a maraca. Do that for a few minutes and then we'll try rinse it out and see what else we get out of it.